then I'm going to give you a one example, one example uh, of this L automata, and that's being called Conway's Game of Life. Okay, this Conway's Game of Life, there is an even board game, very famous, very famous board game. If you have some time, please play it. And if you are our KAIST uh, IE Industrial Engineering student, then please find this in the, uh, in the lounge, student lounge, so that you can play together. So what it does is that it's a life simulation throughout the board game, one person's life simulation. And um, let's do that kind of simulation or as a cell automata. So here, the eventually Conway, Conway is a name of researcher, and that Conway uh, was focusing on is self-reproduction as a life, as a one living person, what would be a most uh, fundamental or like the uh, and some uh, what a uh, basic instinct? What is one of that instinct? It could be self-reproduction, okay, as a living mechanism. So it's the basis of human being, and uh, and we are here because our parents gave birth to us, and we are some of us. We are going to give our uh, give life or birth to our children. And the basic idea is this. So there is a population, a collection of individuals. We want to know uh, whether this society as a collection of individuals will survive or not. These days, this is a big problem, this society, right? Um, so we have a dwindling, real dwindling uh, reproduction rate. And then we always ask, what's the real problem? Because there are many tons of the problems and we want to simplify it, simplify it, and then simplify it, and want to make it as a cell automata model, okay? Given people die if they are not supported by the others. If we don't, if we, are not living as an individual within a society, we die. And we die if the society provides us too much cloudiness and stress. Then people die. Okay? And people procreate, give birth to others, our children, if they are adequately supported. If it is not being much crowded, if it is not being much uh, self-sustained, it has some support from the society, but not too much. Then, if it is just right at the moment, right at the appropriate level, then it will procreate. That's the idea. So, what Conway uh, hypothesized as a cell automata uh, transition rule, because that we need to define the neighboring structure or the connection, graph structure, and supports an initial state. However, uh, having said that uh, Conway was uh, modeling this life law as a transition and state, okay? So here, a cell dies or lives according to some transition law, meaning that it has a binary state. And the world is round, so it's torus space, okay? And then how many rules per life? How many rules per life? There are many rules. And let's say we have three simple rules. A cell, a cell, automaton, or a connected individual will die if there are alive neighborhood cells are less than, uh, less than or equal to two. Okay, if it has no neighbor, one neighbor, two neighbors, it dies. Doesn't have enough support, okay? So it has a, it utilizes more space. More space means that it has how many neighborhoods? Nine? No, eight, right? Among eight uh, neighborhood, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, right? And then, People will die because of the loneliness, right? And people will die, a cell will die if alive. Neighborhood cells are more than or equal to five, meaning that five, six, seven, eight, because of crowdedness, dies out. And then the right level, the right level of procreation, giving birth to uh, the cell life it's three, only two cases, three or four, out of eight. So it has what? 
uh, one quarter, 25% of survivor. If it is, we, we just, if we just count it, very simple. Okay? So, eventually, in user case, we are not going to bet on this case. Okay? Because that we have six cases of dying out and two cases of procreations. Anyway, so we have this transition rule, and then eventually at the center cell, we will get the life, and then because we had support from one to three, so that we have one cell getting alive. And then, this is just a single cell. Let's imagine that we have an initial state and a whole big board of a uh, collection of life. Will it survive? Given this odd, can be a question. So these are more exercise of the uh, life rule application. We have one, two neighbor, two neighbors, so it dies out by removing a center cell. And we have one, two, only two neighbors, so because of loneliness, it dies out at the center cell. We have one, two, three, four, five, okay, too crowded, dies out at the center cell. Okay, too much crowded, dies out, center cell. Only one, two, three, okay, time to pre procreate. It's adequately supported, so one live cell. One, two, three, life cell. So these are the life rules to the population. And what if we give this transition rule to a certain initial step of a large board? What happens? It happens like this. So we have society actually that survives. Even though, so these black dots are the life. Black dots are life, and then progress, progress. Our life progress, okay, even though our survival odd in simple calculation can be only the 25%, eventually such kind of supporting mechanism create a certain interesting patterns, interesting patterns, and the society survives and progresses. Of course, this is not a real life. This is a very artificial life. It's more like kind of amoeba level or bacteria level of the life. However, it provides a certain hope that somehow we will create a pattern for the survival. If we come to this point, now people are asking, okay, that is interesting, Kona's game of life, something new that I learned today. However, is, it, is there any realistic applications in it? Okay, is there any usage or real world usage? Can you just get an insight and we cannot get a real forecasting and planning, doing, going and so forth? And now it's time for the, quest, uh, the answer. So for example, this arrow automata model has been really heavily utilized in the urban planning area. So urban area modeling is being done as a space modeling. Okay, so this is a space modeling. How to synthesize the space of a city. Okay, so we have this initial landscape. Okay, some hills and plains and rivers. And this seaside, how will it survive? So some initial town area, will it survive? How will it, how will it survive? If it is going to survive, will it expand? If it is being expanded, in what direction? Of course, that's very realistic and the, uh, from some eyes, uh, some, from some perspective, very money-making question, right? Because that if we know the development directions um, of the future, then of course we can do some real estate investments, right? So that given this initial stage, what's going to be our next and next and next transitions of our zero tomato landscape imitating the urban area? So there are similarity between the urban growth and zero tomato. Why is that? If you are going to do some real estate investment, what you are going to do? You go to the neighborhood, look around, and uh, like the engage the uh, neighborhood and see that whether it will grow and further develop or not. And by looking at the localness, local, okay, the scenery and neighborhood, that will make your own decision to change that particular land patch, right? 
that's the real estate investment. And there is a similarity because the cell automata look around the local dynamics and decides its own state later, right? And that's its own state development will affect the neighborhood, will affect the neighborhood, and so forth. So that there are similarities between the urban growth and cell automata. So some seed, there are some seed place, and the seed place of some, some small town will invoke an emergent patterns, will grow, will make an emergent growth pattern. And there are some sarcastic aspects in it. Of course, in the real world, there are some randomness. And cellular automata, uh, cellular area is really imitating how the city is being structured by the streets and avenues and blocks of a house and the buildings. And if, if it's going to be a long, long development, so the cellular automata utilization of the investments could be feasible. However, you have to invest it quite a long time very long time, and then, uh, then if it is uh, driven or absorbed by the long city growth, then there will be less likely central coordination, more like local investment and movements, and then it's going to be a good simulation, modeling and simulation scenario by the cellular automata. So utilizing cellular automata is quite common in these kind of spatial models rather than modeling individual dynamics. And then, let's see uh, the user uh, specifications of those cellular automata space model. Then, how to make a city growth cellular automata model in terms of the formalism. So here, uh, I'm giving you some uh, citation here as well. So this uh, image is coming from here. And then, this image is actually showing you a river and growth region, urban area, right? And this is being modeled, as you can see clearly, each of these pixels correspond to what? The city growth model of the cell automata. So simple city growth cell automata will be formalized as right, the first you need to set up the ground, so two-dimensional grid cell automata model. It will not have a torus model because it's not a realistic model, rather it's an abstract model. So it's a cell automata model. And another thing is the first state. Okay, so here it is just saying then urban and rural or maybe green. So you have to set up the city growth uh, state. And then you have to set up the neighborhood, for Neumann neighborhood, Moore neighborhood, or some cellular, circular neighborhood. Why do we use a circular neighborhood? Because then if we follow some uh, radius, right, distant uh, calculation, then circular neighborhood, neighborhood also can be feasible. And also transition rules. If a cell is rural area, if cell is a rural cell, if it is surrounded by three or more urban cells, it's going to be changed to the urban cell. This is the most simplistic uh, transition rule. If we have more states, transition rule will be more complex. We can have continuous uh, states. In that case, we will have some continuous uh, setup in terms of transition function. If a cell is an urban cell, keep it as an urban cell, is this an end? Maybe not. If we have some, let's say, like the uh, slum area here, then urban area will turn into slum area if a certain conditions are met. So we need to expand the states, and then we need to take the, uh, expand the transition rules. Somehow, in those directions, you will set up a cell automata like this. And this is the most simple, simplest and simple uh, city growth cityscape model. Cityscape model. So there are some stochastic aspects in it. 
if the if there is some uh, initial setup, then this part is not a stochastic element in it. However, rather also let's say probabilistic state change can be introduced here. Delta, for example. All right, we have three surrounding. Uh, urban cell and it is ready for this rural cell to be urban cell but with some coin toss. Okay, we can add those kind of pro probabilistic state change models in it. So while I'm showing you how to set up such kind of city growth model with the cell automata uh, specifications, however, uh, there are more tools and interesting simulations on this city growth model that you can reach. And I recommend one of the interesting, most, uh, one of the simplistic, however interesting scenario is supported by this net logo model, which you can uh, click it and you can learn it on your web browser. Okay, let's do that and let's see uh, how can we uh, develop further uh, from these types of cell automata model with our own custom specific rules.